if they are giving a page to test, first positive case you have to test. So whether you, you perform the actions, all the links in the web page, and each link is working or not, then come back to the same page. And buttons, they will give you sometimes a back button, back button, continue button will be there. So when you, when you hit the back button, are you able to navigate to the back button or not? When you click on the continue button, when you continue to the next page or not? That is what you have to check. So without filling there, so for example, you have edit boxes. Without filling, you try to click on next button or continue button, it should not allow. So because there are some mandatory fields. So mandatory fields, you have to take care. Enter mandatory fields, data. A test data, you have to prepare that. If you enter a test data, then it will allow proper data again. Invalid data, if you do, it won't accept. That's another case. Entering the valid data is one positive test case. Entering invalid data is a negative test case. And without entering any data is another negative test case. It, here, two negative cases. Don't enter any, uh, don't enter any data. That's a one negative test case. And see, you are getting a warning message are not on the top. That morning message verification is another very, very important point. That's a validation checking. And then entering a negative data, data is not correct. Then check, submit, submit the page. What will happen? You see that. And this is the what test cases you have to write. And again, error message should display on the top. That's your expectation. And see application behavior, how application is behaving. So they will ask all these interview questions. Or they will give one piece, how you will test. Can you give me a test cases they will ask. So you have to say look and feel, alignment, uh, the grammatical mistakes are there are not in the content. And the links are uh, without entering data, you try submitting the page, it should not allow. With entering the valid data, it should allow, should go navigate to next page. And when you use a back button is there, you navigate to whether the page is navigating to back page or not, check that also. Another test case, you have to write, validating the back button. So click on back button, it should go to previous page where from where you came to this page. So these are all the test cases generally will be there in the uh, any application you go. And so you are regularly are using madams all your Facebook you are using regularly will use red right? Facebook. Facebook you will use and you will uh, post a, uh, some post anybody post you will go like and uh, you will do comment like is one functionality. Comment is another functionality. This is what all the testing means. They already tested when you click on like, and you can see the count will increase, like count. When you unlike, the count will decrease. Comment. So you can see the comments who are all commented on that post. Or you can add a post. Add post is another functionality. This is the functional test case, that one. So validating the like is another functionality test case. Functional test case, that one. You're checking whether it is working or not. A comment, when you comment on the post, that's another functional test case. These are basics, anywhere you are doing that and uh, when the situation comes, when the page comes, you are not able to tell all this. So these are all you have to tell. Real use cases, whatever, in the Gmail, you're using a Gmail. You want to send a mail. That's your high-level use case. What you will do? What you will do if you want to send a mail? From the beginning, you tell me. Anyone?
login. login you have to log in. Mm -hmm. Open the browser. Mm. Open the browser. Mm. And then go and click on the mail. Where is the mail? Enter the gmail.com URL. Ah. The browser you opened, madam. Where you will get you open? See, I opened a browser, madam. Where is my thing? You have to type here the gmail, right? Yes, sir. Which application you really want to open? And why are you then? And then automatically it will come for you, everything. You have to go step by step. Enter the gmail.com. Okay, next. And search it. Set. Pushpa, After where are you? What, what is my ask, Pushpa? What is After my ask? Pushpa? Can you tell me what I asked first to tell me? How to open the Gmail in steps? First, listen, Pushpa. I want to send a mail. What are the steps you will follow? That's what my question. I want to send an email to other person. What are the steps you will follow? That's what the, my question. Okay. For that, what steps you will give? Open the browser. Enter the, enter the, enter the um, mailing uh, Gmail or uh, Yahoo mm -hmm. in the search box. Okay. So depending on the search and you click on enter, uh, then it will be giving the search details. Mm -hmm. You need to select uh, the required uh, um, uh, URL. Uh, mm -hmm. URL. Then it mm -hmm. will be redirected to the Gmail. After that, uh, click on uh, yeah. maybe if it is a login or sign in, then we need to click on. If not, if it is showing directly the login page, then we need to enter the email address. If it is if it is not registered and uh, there again, we need to check. Uh, we can, we need to create uh, the Gmail or uh, Yahoo account. Sir, you consider, sir, uh, you are sending a mail means you have account, okay? So can yeah. consider that. Yes, if you are, if I am having the email, uh, email means the email account, uh, then enter the email, click on mm. next button, then it will mm. be asking for the password to enter the password. Enter mm. the password, there I'll be entering the, means there are different, different cases for if I am going with the positive case, so then I'll be entering the email address and the password and click on the login. So it mm. will be redirected to the, to the desired page. There mm. I need to click on uh, compose. Mm. Compose, then what you will do? Then you click on compose only, it will send a mail? On the, mm -hmm. after clicking on compose, we need to enter the uh, email address which we, we want to send. After that, mm. uh, we need to, if there is an option of uh, entering the um, subject, it will be, as it is a mandatory, sometimes uh, uh, we can enter anything. We need to enter the subject, and uh, after that, we need to enter the body and click on send. This is are the steps. See how many steps he told. These are the steps. So test case steps. So. Yes. The high level. That's what you have to follow in your uh, testing. Also, you have to write while writing all these steps. You have to write. This is what the testing means, not directly landing. Don't jump. So from the beginning, okay, open the browser, uh, type the application URL, then log in, perform the login, then click on compose, then so enter the two address, uh, CC, or if you want to CC somebody and add those email address, then subject, you enter subject. Without entering subject also, you try and without body also you try, with the body you try, and click and send button, with attachment you try, without attachment you try, and you, want, you try the coloring of the content of the body. So, so many, so many test cases. This is what guys are testing means, okay? I'm, I'm giving a very high level, okay? So let's move on to the, our uh, test levels. Anyway, given brief, but still you have to read properly. Okay. And uh, let's move where we are in the test levels, right? Test levels uh, we completed till integration. Yes. 
So integration testing is done. So integration also, did I explain? Uh, no, uh, Ramesh. Many, you are not explained ways, last class. No, how many ways we can uh, uh, integrate the code? Did I give that? No, I, I think I haven't no. given. No. Okay, no. I haven't explain given. Explain the basic. Uh, yeah. What is integration testing? I explained, right? Yes. Basic. Yes. Okay. So, okay. Integration testing means I told you individual components. So, different testing team people tested the different functionality, different modules. Those modules are joining together. And all the so components code, they will combine and give you as a single application. Single application they will give to you. Again, same procedure. But here now, other functionality also added to you. So while adding, you have to check, okay, data, maybe you have to navigate your, your, your functionality. You have to check data is going from module one to module two, module two to module three or not, you have to check. That is what the integration. Data flow is happening or not. And mainly, the communication between the modules is happening or not. So very simple example, a very basic example you take. And I was keep on telling, right, this so e-commerce website. So I'm searching a product, OK? So let's take this. I search this product. So I added. So I want to add. So this product, I want to buy, OK? Then I'll click on Add to Cart. So where I selected that in the home page, I selected. Then details page has come. Detail page, I added to the cart. See, the count is increased. Before it was two, now go to cart. Click on go to cart. See that same image, same, the data is flowing. This is what you need to confirm. The data is flowing from previous page to this page. This is what integration. What is integration, sir? This is add to cart is a different module. Not same as a previous page. So that page, whatever you selected is showing here. And price also showing here. Same price, whatever showing there. Same content it is showing here. This is what the integration testing, you are going to test it. Again, not all this, uh, these things, you won't bother about that whether this quantity is selecting more and all this, you won't bother about because the add to cart uh, testing time you did already. So add to cart module testing time, you did all this one product, then uh, checking the checkbox, then deleting, save for later, compare with the similar items. This is the, this is the one functionality. This is another functionality. This is another functionality. This is another functionality selecting. So more than one products. See, this message is coming. You have to check this message also. It will give, they will give in the uh, requirement, they will give this, okay? This message should come if you select more than three or more than two that. Then check this checkbox, click on these links, learn more. So these are all that you tested already. So separately add to cart model, independent model you tested, right? That time you tested all these things. Here you will test only data flowing from main page to uh, this page, data is flowing or not. That's what you will test in the integration. Are you clear on the integration? What you will do in the component testing? What you will do in the integration testing? Is this clear for everyone? Yes, hmm? sir. Yes. Yes. Yes, sir. Yes. So. All the people are not coming up. If you have any doubts, still let me know. If you have a queries. This is a very, very important for your automation testing. Anywhere you go, manual testing is a mandatory task. First, you have to do manual testing. Please understand, I'm giving all the real examples. And if you have queries, please ask me now itself. This single doubt also you ask. And later, don't bother me later. 
If the class, why you are not asking, the others also will learn, right? What is your doubt? I'm giving time here in the class. Utilize the class. Why you are not utilizing the class? I have so many works other, uh, no, after uh, my class. Again, I have another uh, class after this class. I cannot give time for you guys. So that's why I'm giving time in the class itself. So ask any silly doubt also. Don't feel, okay, this is silly doubt. I should not ask. No problem. So you have to clear your doubts. That's important. And I, I, I cannot see that. Only a few people are responding. What about others? Are you all clear on this? What you will test in the component testing? I will ask again. I will ask each and every person. Yes. You yes. should be able to tell. You should be able to answer. Yes, sir. Yes. yes. So on integration testing, what you will test? So I need answers for this. This is what the real cases I have, I have given. Individual component testing time, each and every links, each and every functionality. If there is a drop down, whether you're able to select more or not. So if it is a drop, uh, no checkbox, whether you're able to check the checkbox or not, uh, whether you select, select this and whether you're able to check this checkbox or not. And all these are functionality, individual component time, each and every thing you will test in the individual component. Again, I'm repeating, even if you do, even though you are not asking. And the image is, again, UI. UI test case means the image is properly displaying or not. The text is proper or not. And the there is no grammatical mistakes. The price is showing properly or not. Aligned properly. See, this is aligned properly. This text and this, there is a proper space. And right side, it is aligned properly. The price, see price column, the column, and then this. And see, all are aligned correctly on the same line aligned. Then subtotal, total how many? Two items. So here, two items. That's why it is showing two items. And the total cost of this, these two items cost is correct. This is the calculation. That is what they have written the code internally. First two item price plus second item price and then they are displaying total here in the subtotal and the same will show here also and then here also this part also and how many items here it is showing this is the another logic all the code they have written for this that's why it is uh, showing this data this is what you will test in the individual component how many how many products you can add check that Add more products. See that. Add one product. Add without product. Cart without product. That's one test case. Cart with one product. That's one test case. Cart with more than one test, one product. And uh, cart more than the limit. So how many you can add more to the cart? These are all the test cases. So that's the individual component. You will test like this, all this component in detail. And whereas it comes to integration, you will focus only on the data flowing from, okay, module one, you selected. It is going to module two or not. That's it. That's the only verification you have to do in the integration. Other than that, again, this uh, single uh, test cases, you won't test again. The data flow from one module to other module is happening or not, you will check in the integration testing. If you tell these words also, fine. So combining all the individual modules as a single unit, unit. and then check the data flow from one module to other module or not. Or the communication is happening between the different modules or not. That is what we will check in the integration testing. So how they will integrate the and how they will combine the development team. So then our part is testing, but how they will combine the code and give it to you as a single application. So these are the there are different uh, approaches the development team will follow. Those are top-down approach, 
bottom up approach hybrid approach or big bang approach or system approach is there so top down approach means so main module this is the one module this is the another module this is the another module they are developing but main module and sub module one is ready but sub module two is not ready what they will do again they have to connect that with the main module so what they will do they will include one temporary program that is called stub they will include one temporary program called stub so temporary program means what it will do this temporary program why is sir they are including this temporary program this module is still under development that means coding is going on still the complete coding they haven't completed the coding of this module still under mod uh, construction still under coding still under work in progress developer still is working on this module and then you have to connect then what they will do they will put a one temporary program what this temporary program will do when you click on this module in the ui then really if it is in the work in progress it will fail it will show errors for you because of this temporary program the control when you click on this the control will redirect to this module that's what this temporary program will do the control will redirect even though if you click on this okay this temporary program will redirect the control to this main module main this that's what the top down approach top down means you are connecting top to bottom that's a top down approach means okay and see in this approach first parent modules are developed then child modules are developed then interconnect parent and child modules in this process so any sub module is under process or under construction the developers will create a temporary program that is called stubs stub stub we call that so top down and there is a called temporary program stub t and s at least remember like that t and s in the top down approach what is the temporary program if anybody ask you tell stub so very close t for a so t and s very side by side right so you can at least remember like that what is the temporary program in the top down approach stub so bottom up approach bottom up approach means first sub modules will be developed then they will interconnect with the main module so main module is still under construction so that case they will use a driver bottom up approach b is close to driver right so the here a temporary program is a driver so when this module is not ready if you are trying to click on that it will redirect to any of these modules this module because you are connecting here a driver it will redirect to this or if you connect a driver here it will redirect to this so basically which is under construction it won't go there the controller when you you, you don't know right so, but when you click on that you won't get any error and it will redirect automatically that's the bottom up approach how the developers will combine the code next hybrid approach hybrid approach means top to bottom bottom top you keep connecting that's a hybrid approach a combination of top down and bottom up approaches is called hybrid approach but nowadays nobody uses this everybody using system approach only system approach means what so the programs the modules will be interconnect after completing all the code and unit testing is done development is done unit testing is done then they will join that's what the system approach or big bang approach everybody follows this approach only nowadays other approaches nobody no developer will follow and these are very high level i'm giving you don't need that much okay so what is a build means a build is which application you are testing that is called build application under test aut means application under test which application under test that is called aut or build we call this build means all the combined code all the combined programs in one environment deployed and that url will be given to you that's a build the newly written code they will combine everything and uh, they will make it as a package or jar 
that they will deploy in the environment and they will prepare an environment that is called build. So they will give so many builds. So the, don't worry, build means what is build? Sarto didn't tell. Uh, build means a new code that is deployed in the environment and given to you. That means, okay, this is then there are some changes in the code. So that you need to test on this build. So they will give build one, build two, build three like that. So build one means some code. Build two means there is some improvement in the build two. So that is part this, okay? And these are examples I'm giving, real examples, you see that. So battery and SIM card are integrated, assembled in order to start the mobile phone. So if independent components, battery is one independent component, SIM card is another independent component. Charger is another independent component. But when you combine all of them, it's become a so unit. Next, very important, system testing or functional testing. System testing or functional testing or black box testing also we call this. So what is mean by this? So after integration, the code will be transferred to staging environment. The code you tested in the integration, no issues are there. The code will be transferred to one more environment, staging environment. In the staging environment, so this is the system testing involves all the integrated code as a one whole application. So you will get a whole application. That means all features are ready and ready for the system. So here again, you will perform in detail test cases. You will execute based on your requirements completely. That means based on the test cases. That's what the system testing means or functional testing means. So QA verifies whether the system meets the requirements, customer requirements, all are meeting or not in this staging environment. You will check one more time. So it includes multiple test cases like updating, validating the output based on the specific input. You will give the input and you will check the output. You will click on something, whether it is going to other page or not. The input is clicking on something and going to other page. That's output. So you're selecting a, from a drop down one option. The input is you're selecting. Option is you want to select one option. That's another output. So I want to select from this drop down. For example, from this drop down, uh, I want to select appliance. My input is clicking on the appliances. Whether it is selected or not, that's our expected output. So this is how everything is your testing in that. And here, when you click any mouse over, see, I didn't click any mouse over, the menu is showing or not, you have to see that. So when you, when you open this, different language versions are showing or not. See, radio buttons. See, alignment also. See how nicely alignment is there. This is what you need to check. Everything in so neat and clean. That's what you have to check, whether that is properly aligned properly placed and functional wise, you have to check functionality is working or not. So that is what you will check. So that's what the system testing. In the system testing, you will do so many testings. I told you right just now. So testing whole system against functional requirement document is called system testing. So what is that? Testing the whole application or system against functional requirement document is called system testing. So this is a pure definition of system testing. So this is also called black box testing or functional testing. So these are different names for system testing. And in the system testing, what all you will do? First, GUI testing, in user interface testing, graphical user interface testing. So you will check look and feel, how the look and feel. And then spelling mistakes are there or not, alignment issues, consistency, Tab order is proper or not. Tab order means, for example, my tab is here. Okay. My tab is here. Press the tab key. Where it went? So here it is the tab. From here to here it came. Next, where is the tab? Here. Next, where is the tab? 
skip to skip main to content. Main content. So then logo is selected. Then this one location. Then the drop down. Then see left to right it is moving. Can you observe that? That's a proper okay. tab order. Tab order is proper or not? You have to check. And uh, spelling mistakes are there or not? You see, you see here each menu the space is unique. That's a consistency. The font size also see unique. That's a consistency means. Okay, so this is the aligned. See aligned nicely. This is the alignment. Sometimes what will happen in the testing environment? This text will go and align with this image. And sometimes this price will come and align with this text. That's a bad alignment. You can file the bugs, all this bad alignment also. Sometimes what will happen, this, this text and this will uh, no overlap. And sometimes this and this text overlaps. So this text will go and kiss this uh, uh, checkbox. And sometimes all this will be cluttered. So this is all bad alignments. You have to check these alignments are proper or not. See, properly they kept in the same space. This is what properly aligned meant you have to check. So that's why all UI test cases I'm giving. What are the UI test cases you need to check? Look and feel, alignment. Mm -hmm. Look and feel, alignment. Mm -hmm. Alignment, mm -hmm. spelling. Mm -hmm. Consistency, consistency of the text, consistency of the font, consistency of the, so where it aligned and that's a consistency is another tab order and the image color, color cells you have to check, size and height and width of the image and font um, height and width. Font. So all these are UI test cases, usability test cases we call them. So please you know, remember this always. Anywhere you go, you have to apply these test cases on the application. I'm giving thumb rules. You have to apply any application you are testing. You have to check height and width of the you know, thing. And they will give font size of this. So the same where you can see sir, this font. Just right click, inspect, and the styles. You see, can you see here it is styles? Can you see styles here? Yes. yes. So this is the C, width, white space, line height, word break, normal, C, color. So, on the top? Yes, sir. Little bit down. Here. Font size, you see? 18 pixel. This is the font size. You have to check all this. So they will give, okay, this much font size must be there. It should not be more than this. And you have to check here and uh, confirm. If your test case, it will be there. So check the font size. Okay, this font size and that expectation, both are matching. Okay, test case pass. Okay. So this is the UI test cases. Are we good with the UI test cases? Yes, sir. Yes. 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 So all this is I'm showing practically, guys. If you have any doubt, please ask me. This uh -huh. is the again. I don't know if I experience. I don't have experience. What is this? This is what experience, right? Anywhere you have to go and check the same thing. I'm showing you how to check. Any application that is, this is the things you have to check. There is no racket science there, right? And then next, positive testing or happy path testing, we call this. Positive testing means providing the valid input data. That is called and check the, you give the valid input data and valid functional flow. That is called positive testing or happy path testing. So example here, entering valid username and password in the login section. That's a one valid use case and entering the valid product. This is a valid uh, input keyword. This is my test data. This is my valid test data. Is this a valid test data? 
No. 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 So that is the invalid test data. And next, without any data, without any data, also a negative test case. So that's what the negative test case means. Negative testing or negative test case means. Is it clear about positive and negative test cases? Yes. 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 Negative testing means performing a testing with incorrect data or invalid data or without any data. That is called negative testing or error validation testing. It validates the if the system throws a proper error message or not for the invalid input data and behaves as expected. So that is called negative testing. So let me show you one pra practical example here. I'm clicking on the forget password. See, I'm not giving any data, I'm clicking. So this is the negative testing. This is the negative testing. And clicking on the back button, positive functional flow. Positive functional flow. Clicking on continue, it should navigate to registration page. This is the positive functional flow. Clicking on home icon, this is the positive testing. So clicking on again, register, positive test case. And entering all the data and submitting. And try with a different combination, subscribe yes, and one time subscribe no other time, try it out. So if there is a this mandatory field check, you have to see. If the mandatory mark is there, you must enter the data. And check this, login page is, link is working or not. See, you landed. This is the expectation. What, what action you did in the registration page? To reach this page? <laughs> Oh my God. Huh? After entering the data. Madam, so what, madam, so what, madam. So you clicked on the login page. Click on the login page link. That's the action you did. Action means your input action. That's the action means input data. You are giving input. What is the input? Click action you are giving. So what is it you are expecting? If you click on this, go to the login page. Navigate, login page. Login page. Login page. Login page. navigate to login page. Is it reached the login page? Yes. 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 That's your expectation and application behavior also reaching the login page. That's both are matching. So test case is passed. Your expectation is customer will tell in the requirement document. When you click on the login page in the registration page, it should navigate to login page so application behavior also navigating right yes so that means both test cases are passed so both uh, application behavior customer expectation both are matched so that test case is passed are we good yes 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 yes, yes. yes sir. so here i clicked on the forget, forget password so action is forget password you did and where you landed, forget password page. That's your expectation. Application behavior also same. And customer expectation also same. So test case is passed. Now, you are validating the back. Where it has to go? Your, what is your action here? Back. back. Click on back. Click action. Click on back. back button. Click. Click on back button. Follow the one and how she is saying, guys. This is the terminology you have to use. Click okay. on back button. Proper terminologies are important. Click on back button. That's the action you are doing. That's same statements you have to use. Click on forget password link. I told you already object names. The object names, if you don't know, please uh, read our uh, video, uh, that first video. Forget, click on forget password. Click on continue button. So entering the data. So entering the data. And see when you click on the account, so it is going to account page or not. When you click on this, it is going to now home page or not. These are all the testing means. Okay. So positive negative testing is done. Next. 
this is okay. I, I don't want to. So please go through this all I have given. So, and uh, in detail. So system integration or end-to-end -end testing, we have six minutes, I have another class immediately. So end-to-end -end testing means, what is meant by end-to-end -end testing? Okay, so I told you individual components, right? End-to-end -end testing means from, for example, you want to buy a product, you want to buy a product. So what is uh, from the beginning to till the end of the pro, no, buying confirmation phase up, appears? That's the one end to end test case. So searching a product, adding to the cart, check out the product, pay the amount, get the confirmation. That's the one end to end flow. That's the end to end test case means. Sir, this many pages you have to navigate. Not necessary all this many steps. Sometimes you are uh, only searching is one end to end test case. So that's the one, what you will do, you will open the application, you will enter the product in the edit box, then you will click on the touch icon. That's a one end to end test case. Or add to, so add to cart is one end to end test case. So then why, if you want to add a product to the cart, that's one end to end test case. So what is that? So you will search a product and you will select a product and then it will go to the detail space. Then you will click on add to cart. This is the one end to end test case. See, so many steps are there, right? So these are all steps you are performing. That's one end-to-end -end test case. Okay, that's a system testing or integration testing, a system uh, integration or end-to-end -end testing means it is going to interact with the different components of the application, different components. What are the different components of the application? Last class I explained. Hmm? What are the different comp components of a web application? Presentation type, application type. Request, it's giving the request to web server. Mm. Then the web server will go to the data, data layer. It comes mm -hmm. Okay, so basically you have a clients, then you have a web server, application server, then data server, database, okay? So these are the three layers will be there. So when client will send the request to the web server, so the web server basically content will be there. In the web server content and also you need a logic. Logic will be there in the application server. Where the logic will be there? It will be there in the application oh, server. Application server. <laughs> So any logic has to execute, it will go to application server. Any data you need, it will go to database. database. And you will, uh, your request will come back and show in the uh, your page. That's how this is the components. So all these components will be interacted or not, you will check in the end-to-end -end testing. So basically what, sir, where is end-to-end -end testing, all the components in the end-to-end -end test? For example, you are booking a product. What will happen once, once you book a product? So there is an order will be created, right? The order will go and store in the database. Order ID, the order product to order ID will go and store in the database. So that means you're interacting with the database and you're buying a product and that's a logic is executing in the application code is calling. And then you are so searching a product and you, the, this content you are getting. So these are all the different components you're interacting. That's what the end-to-end -end testing means, okay? Next, acceptance testing. So what is mean by acceptance testing? So acceptance is the main goal of acceptance testing is to verify with the system. So as a whole, it is fit for the real world use or not. Real world use, it is ready or not, you are going to check. First, you will check internally in your company inside and also the acceptance testing is performed both internally and externally. Internally means inside the company. That is called internal acceptance testing or alpha testing. So which is performed by the inside the company members, like a business analyst, to senior test engineers so, and senior developers. So these people will test this alpha testing. That's called UAT testing, we call that. So what do we call that? The 
last testing before releasing, you will perform UAT testing, user acceptance testing. So inside the company, it will happen and they will check all the real use cases, how people will use. They will test that only. That is called user acceptance testing uh, inside the company, it will happen. So there is one more external testing that is called beta testing is performed by a limited number of end users. End users means not inside the company, outside people, the client side people. They will go and test that. They will try to use the application, how it is working before releasing to the wider, wider audience. First, they will use client side, some of the end users, they will use the application. So this approach helps to evaluate the how the product is behaving, how the requirements are implemented, how this each functionality is working. All this will be checked by this external people or end users that is called beta testing. That's the difference between alpha testing and beta testing means. Okay, are you clear? Yes. Yes. So this is all about the test levels. Okay. Please uh, take it very high level. Okay, whatever I explained, very high level, and also today's topic 